Hello and welcome to a new module of our hands-on exploit development course. In this module, we'll be covering on developing exploits for input fields in a standalone or a desktop-based application. So these are the few assumptions that I'm working with. I'm assuming that you as a learner have a prerequisite or basic knowledge of following things. Assembly level language, Kali Linux, Python and Immunity Debugger. However, if you want to learn these tools or software from scratch or you want to learn more about them, please check out the resources mentioned at the end of this video. This is our module structure and I am on the first part which is introduction wherein we cover a brief overview of the technique that we are going to learn in this module. So these are the tools required for this module. We will need a virtualization software. You can use either VirtualBox or VMware, whichever you are comfortable with. And we need two virtual machines, one Linux machine and another Windows machine. For Linux, I will be using Kali Linux 2018.1 and on that machine, I will require Python 2.7.9 plus and a text editor. You can use either Sublime Text or Notepad++. For Windows, we will be using a Microsoft Windows 7 SP1 x86 machine and on this machine, we will need Immunity Debugger, Mona Library for Immunity Debugger, and our target software will be Axe SSH 4.2 and we'll also need a text editor. You can either use Sublime Text or Notepad++, again, whichever you are comfortable with. And we need Python 2.7.9 plus on this machine as well. This is the brief overview of our exploitation methodology. We'll first start with manually testing input fields in the application to identify an exploitable crash. We will then go on to create a POC and further develop our exploit. Our final exploit will be a two-staged exploit. The first stage will be to download the stage 2 payload from a web server using the system function of Win32 API. The second stage sends back a reverse shell to the attacking machine after executing the downloaded payload using MSI exec. There are certain pros and cons with this technique. The pro is that that it works great with a limited buffer space of 100 to 300 bytes. Now most of the bind shell or reverse shell payloads after being encoded exceed 300 byte size. So they won't fit in this limited buffer space. The con of this technique is that it is highly OS dependent as we need to hard code addresses of certain functions in our exploit. So in the next part, we'll start with fuzzing our target application. So if you want to learn more about the tools and techniques that are mentioned in this module, please check out these resources. Thank you and I'll see you in the next part.